Yo, 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 what's going on, everyone? This is Eric with Sweet Spot DFast going over a website and database video. If you were following along with me during the road to the Masters, you know I was looking to build a website before the Masters was played. And we did it. We got the website up and running. Now, it's bare bones currently. There isn't a lot that you can find in here. However, one thing I'll note, the first thing I'll note, is you can scroll all the way down to the bottom. You don't have to scroll very far, just a little bit down here. Find out some payment uh, plans that I have going on. You have weekly, monthly, and yearly. I would say don't click on those yet, but there is a founding member subscription where you can be a lifetime member of this website and obviously what i plan to do with this website or i shouldn't say obviously if you're not if you don't know uh, i plan for this to be like a one one stop shop basically of a website you would go to for fantasy golf it'll have all the data you want all the strokes and stats you want it'll have very valuable uh fantasy stats like round by round scoring so showdown uh, stats will be in here i have a lot of plans with this website and i'm very serious about it so if you want to become a lifetime member i am limiting it to 25 users so we have 24 that remain we had someone uh, purchase it after taking down the fifty thousand dollar gpp winner uh, the Drive the Green contest two weeks ago, uh, not not the Masters, but the week before that, he was listening to the the podcast, uh, the Tuesday live streams, got on two golfers that I was pretty high on, and took down fifty thousand bucks. So he was the first founding member. I believe his name is Jason, um, but Mister Stick is what his handle was on the DraftKings. So, anyways. He is the only founding member currently, but I would say, hey, if you are interested, it's $600. Honestly, if you go and look around the entire fantasy industry, $600 is some people's or some websites annual membership fee, which is nuts. That's pretty crazy. You can get $600 from me and I'm, I'm basically throughout this video, I'm going to be going over everything. I mean, here, I'll show you. I have my database right here. It's, it's, it's a spreadsheet, obviously, but we're gonna be going over all the things that I'm including and all the things that I'm working on. And then I'm also gonna bring in some um, requests from you. So throughout this entire video, if you have ideas that you're, you wanna bring to my attention or you would like to see on a website, go ahead, leave them in the chat. Uh, I will take everything to heart i'll i'll listen if it works with what i'm intending to do with this website i will definitely well i will always consider it but if it's if it's really good i'm gonna put it in we're gonna we're gonna update it on stream uh or i'll do it behind the scenes and i'll show you what it'll look like next week but basically i uh, i'm gonna tie a database to my website and you're gonna see reports like you do like on the rick red and good sites um, the fantasy national sites, all those things. It's exactly what my website's going to look like, except for it's just going to be a sweet spot DFS, uh, flair to it. We're going to have all the, all the data, all the information that I care about, like the buckets, top 10, uh, success rates, stuff like that. You'll, it, it'll be pretty cool. So I'm excited for that. Uh, but yes, I will include that, or we're going to be working on this piece of it today in this video but that will be tied to this website so if you want access to it i mean i'm gonna have things that nobody else has on my website so if you're interested do the founding member thing hold off on doing the weekly the monthly and the yearly until i get that database uh attached to the website currently it is not but what you have with the website you have this little fantasy tools drop down menu. You have cheat sheet, optimizer, videos, and articles. There's nothing uh, for articles just yet. So if I drill down on that, um, you'll see it says coming soon. But you go to the videos. If you want to ignore YouTube 
and just come to this videos tab, you can see all of my YouTube videos here. I have, I have put from the master's preview and on, I will just put them right here. You can come here and check. I will at some point in time start writing articles. Um, I haven't done it yet and I have to figure out the, the best way to do it on the website because there are efficient ways of doing it. I just don't know what those are just yet, but that is kind of the plan. And of course, if you want the optimizer, you just click on the optimizer, uh, drop down, bring you this page and then a pop up will appear asking you to put your email in to request the optimizer. Uh, that's just, you know, before every week, if you want the optimizer, I'll send it to you. And then I'll obviously under fantasy tools, I also have a cheat sheet um, that you can see the actual cheat sheet right here. You can't update anything. Uh, I don't even think you can copy anything, but you can also click here and find the cheat sheet on Google Sheets. So all of that is available to you uh, and all you gotta do is sign up. Actually, I don't even think you need to sign up. You you can come here free, but if you wanted to sign up, um, uh, there'll be a login button for you right here. Go log in, uh, register I should say, and then yeah, become a member of sweetspotdfs.com. And obviously in the future when I have things going on, I'll be giving away membership, stuff like that, uh, like weekly or monthly, depending on whatever the giveaway is. So yeah, it'll be available to you. But that is all that I have for you when it comes to the website. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up that spreadsheet that I had. We are going to be doing a deep dive into what I'm, I'm going to be covering. And this is just more of a, a working session for me while I talk to the people in chat like AJ and Lombardi Lee. What's going on, fellas? Nice to see you here. You know what I should I should note too, just by coming in and uh, participating on the on any of my videos, you get credit for giveaways. You get entries, I should say, into giveaways. So uh, I'm gonna just do a roll call right now. Let me get to my giveaways spreadsheet uh, and we'll, we'll go here we'll just call this web from now on we'll call this roll call Just say hi. That's all you gotta do. Say hi. You'll get credit. But yeah, if you're here, just drop a hi. That's all you need to do. H I. Hi. Hi. Hello. How's it going? Let me catch up with chat. Hello, AJ. Glad. Yeah, I'm glad it's a weekend, uh, no cut weekend as well. And hello, uh, Lombardi Lee. Lombardi, you were on the website last night and early this morning. That's awesome, dude. Appreciate it. We will have, I will have some good stuff in there. Uh, I would say before the PJ championship, I will be linking the uh, database to it and then we'll have reports that we can we can actually start looking at. I'll actually have a cheat sheet up and running um, for that. So. Be on the lookout for that. I'll zoom in. Oh, you guys can't even see it. <laughs> I've been I've been pretending like you guys could see what I am uh, talking about. I got you here for the giveaways. AJ, Lombardi, welcome. There we go. Uh, but I suppose I should probably continue on with this. Every week I do a $5 giveaway. And then every month I do a monthly giveaway. And if we reach the sub goal that I have all the way over there to the left, uh, we're at 713 of 700. So we smash that goal. For every 10 subscribers over that goal, I will add $10 to that pot right there. So go from 100 to 110, as long as we keep 100 or 10 more than what we have, 
Um, but there's a possibility of more. So if we can get up to 720, I will add $20 to that pot, so on and so forth. So, and then if you want an entry, all you gotta do is participate just like Lombardi Lee and AJ Love or leave a comment. Leave a comment uh, in the, the replay of this. And that's all that I have to say about that. Prize picks also, if you're not um, on prize picks, I have a link in the description. Click on that link, it'll bring you to a homepage where you get to sign up, or once you sign up, the promo code SweetSpot will be populated. You put $20 in your account, I will get notified that you are a member of the Sweet Spot cohort, and I will give you your $20 back. So, you can play for free, plus prize picks will match your deposit up to $100. So, it's available for you. I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to look back at the spreadsheet and we're just going to go over this. Um, follow along with me if you know what I'm talking about. If not, no big deal. I'll explain as best as I can as I go through it. So basically, I am updating or I'm creating different tables in my database. Uh, I want to keep them as simple as possible. But... I want to add every little piece that I can. So, and I also need to make sure that all of the fields are uniform. So then when I actually do put it into Power BI, it can pick up on it very, very easily. Uh, one thing that I, I realized when I was making that uh, the web series or the video series for the database, uh, Road to the Masters, when I, when I had it in, Power BI, it uh, it couldn't identify the fields, and when I tried to make them numbers, it wouldn't let me because there were some fields that had characters in them, and I couldn't make it a full number field, which means I couldn't average out those fields, so it was a debacle. As much as I thought I had something going correct, it was not, so um, I had to kind of restart the database part that's why it's not connected to the website but learning the whole website was a, a whole feat in itself because there's a lot of things that actually go beyond or behind the website that you wouldn't even can you wouldn't even know unless you were actually unless you actually had built one so yeah uh josh what's going on man you can finally make thursday show because bowling league is done that's awesome how was playoffs I'm, I'm assuming your, your bowling league had playoffs. So when it comes to this database, this first table is called results. And basically the things that I want to make sure that I have in, in, in included are the season, the week, the date that, uh, the Thursday that it was played, the tournament short name, and then I need to create a unique name for each golfer uh, so I can run formulas to build against so there would only be one emiliano grillo 2023 tour championship record because obviously there wouldn't be another 2023 tour championship and emiliano grillo grillo would not have played another 2023 tour championship plus when you do it like this uh and you keep everything uniform and the only thing that really changes is the year now you can start doing some awesome things with formulas where you'll look back at the previous year and the year before that by doing functions or I should say formulas minusing one from, you know, whatever the current year is to try to figure out last year's results or two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, so on and so forth. So it's uh, it's really easy if, if you're into this kind of thing that's what you should do you should always create a unique identifier for each of your golfers um uh entries records whatever you want to call them uh and that's what i i, I did with this one so i wanted uh to keep that i also want to make sure i have the golfer's name down here is their finishing position and then Round one score, round two, round three, round four. Now, I don't necessarily have to include this because I also have a round by round table. And this is also keeping track of their round one, two, three, four score. So I don't like, basically I could trim this because this is just fat. We don't need that. 
Uh, I don't have a score total when it comes to the rounds, so I think that's why I'm going to keep round one, two, three, four. Uh, but I could remove it. And then I have official money one and FedEx cup points because I think those are going to be important to keep track of. I haven't done anything with these yet, but it's it would be good to know. And then when I sc scroll over, I used to copy results from a website that gave you how many OWGR points that went into it. I think I'm going to keep this column here for now. I don't know if I'll ever use it because the OWGR is way different than when I first started keeping track of this stuff. So I don't think it's going to be relevant, but I'll keep it there just to remind myself, hey, there's something I could do with this, um, especially when I do kind of keep track of the OWGR points as they used to be on all of my individual uh, spreadsheets. So that's certainly something I'm thinking about doing. Score to par is in here because I want to see. Well, yeah, I just want to see what their score to par is, especially when it comes to the tour championship. It's kind of self evident. Like why, why would you want to keep it? But uh, in case it wasn't, I want to keep it because it lets me know how golfers actually performed and the tour championships really the only wonky one. So I've got score total here and score total here. Why? This is probably something I will delete unless I can figure out what the difference is. And I really don't see one, so I probably will remove it. I don't see any difference. I might have just moved it, moved it around. So there we go. We delete one. Make the table one less field, uh, uh, I want to say smarter, <laughs> but uh, shorter, which is which is good. That means it just it's faster. Then I have a tour score, so you can see score to par, and then tour score the difference. So Victor Hovland had an eight shot cushion or eight shot starting position, minus eight, I should say. His total score was minus twenty seven and. He actually shot minus 19 throughout the tournament. Uh, I do have low round here, which is fine. And then I also am keeping track of all rounds under 70, which is which will be good because we'd want to see that kind of percentage when it comes to building lineups because DraftKings does a round all four rounds under 70 bonus. Total rounds is just something I need for calculations. Average round score is nice. You know, it's it's always good to calculate that stuff. And then I've got, you know, did they play round one? Did they play round two, three, four? Ones mean they did, zeros mean they did not. That also kind of comes into play, um, especially with different types of math formulas and stuff like that. So I don't know what else I, that I need to add to results. Do you guys know? Do you know something to add to the results table? It would be encompassing the whole tournament. Now, just so you know, uh, I'm sure you can't see it. It's probably going to be way too small on your guys' screen. But I've got a results table, a round, or I call it rounds table, but it's round by round table. The bucket system, which I actually have to update. Course history, which we'll talk about. Recent form, strokes gain stats, fantasy stats. This is like DraftKings points and all that stuff. I need to update this one as well. I do have a golfer profile that hasn't been touched, a golf course uh, table that has not been touched, and a tournament information that has not been touched. But those will be just copy and paste from different spreadsheets that I have. But from the results, I um, can't really think of anything off the top of my head. Let's see here. Like just just for instance, if you wanted to know what, what else could we get from is this one for showdown lineups? Are you talking about this this uh, YouTube video? The live video? Because I'm not doing anything showdown, but if you're talking about uh, me mentioning this to Byron, Tuesday night, this would be the round by round stuff. 
So I've got round one scoring, round two, round three, round four. So you can, and then, you know, when you link this to a reports builder, you can figure out what their average round by round one score is, average round two, average round three, average round four, and then you'll have low round one, low round two, so on and so forth. Uh, you can do any kind of cal calculations, so I don't need to create those calculations over here, but it might be... Actually, I don't even know. I would want DraftKings points, I think, when it comes to rounds. I'd want birdies when it came to round, round by round. So... Yeah, I guess when it comes like round by round, okay, th this one's a little bit easier to, oh, you know what? I just actually answered one of my other questions. Birdies, eagles, that kind of stuff would be good. So basically I'd want birdies round one, birdies round two, birdies round three, birdies round four. And then basically the same thing with eagles, but the fast... Actually, I didn't have to type all that stuff out. Could have made that one faster. We can just switch birdies to eagles. And I don't have these stats yet, but I will get them. Um, I, I think I'm going to add a job board to my website. How many, how many of you would actually be interested if I were to tell you... Um, hey, if you find this information to me and you send it to me, I'll give you $5. Like maybe, I mean, it'd be worth more. It'd be, I'd give you something based off of what I think would be an hourly wage. Like I'd give you, you know, maybe like $10 and like a monthly, a free month, one month subscription to the website. Um... If you did, if you gave me like, if you found four tournaments and you gave me, or maybe not even four tournaments, maybe one tournament and you gathered all the birdies and eagles that a golfer had and it was round by round information, that'd be awesome. If I made a job board saying, hey, you could get paid this, would any of you be interested in doing that? Would do you think anyone would find interest in that? So basically, I'll just use this spreadsheet. I would be, I would have maybe tournament and then job. And say for the RBC Heritage. Uh, 2023 birdies. Uh, I forget what those that what are, what are those called? Like birdies, eagles, pars. Their names of scores, obviously. I, I don't know what the... Let's just say scoring data. But it was something like this. If I had a job board that had something like this. How many people do you think would actually do something like that? All right, let me see what you guys wrote. AJ, do you do showdowns sometimes? Cool, cool. Got a little money back from League, you're saying? Is this one for showdown lineups? I, I answer that one. Okay, that's cool. Brandon the Great goes, yes. I don't know what yes pertains to. <laughs> That's the hard thing about streaming. So like, I know I asked you a question, but I think I asked you two questions. I think I asked you, are you looking? Yeah, I already forgot what that first question is, but the second question was, or are you referring to when I was talking to Byron? That was, I think the second question. If you give a round two lineup, I'm playing it JS. Doesn't the game log in DraftKings show all that info? How to upload that data quick to your spreadsheet? No idea. Not computer savvy. Um, 
well, yeah, it does, but it's not like super simple. Um, and it isn't round by round. At least I don't know. It, maybe you guys are looking at something different than what I've been looking at. Okay. So you're talking about something like this, right? All this information in here. I believe that's what you're looking at. Game log. You can find all that information here. You know what? I didn't even realize this. Let me see how well this works. I, I didn't even think about doing this, honestly. Did not think about doing this. Wow. You know what? I... <laughs> uh, well, okay. So this is... Here's the thing. This is time consuming. I This is player by player, right? You'd have to go into each each of the players and do this find their information so this would all just have Scotty Scheffler off to the side right Scotty let me zoom in so you guys can see it I never even thought about doing something like this I didn't even know it was gonna work to be quite honest with you But it, th this is what I would be saying. I'd, I'd be like, okay, I would want someone to go through and give me 20 golfers, 25 golfers, and then I'd have a list of golfers that I don't have information for. So what you would end up doing is going through all of that and finding this information for me and sending it to me. Because quite frankly, I mean, so this didn't take long, right? But I'll show you what would take long. Okay, that's Scotty, right? Cool. That's Scotty. All right, let's go into Xander. Do Xanders. Copy and paste. You know, and then, and then you would do Xander. But, like, that didn't take long. That might be 15, 20 seconds, but do you have a robot brain where you can continuously... Keep on, you know, grabbing all that information and, and providing it. But this is great. I, yeah, I never thought about doing it this way. But then also what you can see is then I just only have 2024 data, right? Uh, I believe ESPN... So if, I think before 2024, if I go to 2023 and I think it would be before the Ryder Cup. So I think if I go to Sanderson Farms and I go to player stats, it actually gives me an accurate, like this is, this is, like this is better having this information right here. So this is ESPN.com. Like this is better for me because it'll have their name. Um, Eagles, birdies, pars. Now we'd have to just double check. Easy way to do that is there are 72 holes in a round of golf as long as it's, you know, four rounds of golf on the tour. So you just add all these up to make sure they equal 72. And here's the interesting thing. These top guys that tied, you see there was a playoff. If I go back to the, le the leaderboard, there was this five-person playoff. If you if you look at this, uh, if I go back to core stats, uh, player stats, sorry. We have 24 plus 44. Do the quick math, that's 68. Add five, that's 73. 73. Um, that's too many. <laughs> that's too many uh too many 
stats per hole. I don't want I don't want the playoff holes. So then you would have to go back and take a look, and it looked like looks like uh, Luke List birdied that hole while they all parred it. So that's what you would remove from their their numbers. So Luke List wouldn't have 24 birdies. He had, he would have 23 birdies. I'm not gonna count the playoff holes because that you want all the stats to be similar for everyone that's golfed in that tournament. So if everyone's made or of all the people that made the cut, you would want only those holes that every golfer played, not the playoff holes. Maybe the playoff holes, you actually could add in playoff birdie, playoff uh, par, playoff whatever. That would actually be a smart way to do it. But I'd much rather have it this way. The only thing that's an issue is ESPN. Uh, I think it was like when the fall season happens. So I think Fortinet is jacked up, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so Fortinet's jacked up. I knew it. Like I... At least I have a memory for that. And you guys can't even see. It's way too zoomed out. Um, but you see how this is 0, 5, 11, 1. Yeah, that, that doesn't equal 72. That's one of the rounds. Not sure which round. But that was the getting into the fall events. Oh, well, Sanderson, never mind. So Sanderson was after. Okay, never mind. Let's see, what's this one? 28, 64, 71, 72. All right, so I, I have the Shriners information. I don't know what they did with the Fortinet, why that's all jacked up. 24 plus 40, 64, 70, 72. So we get all the numbers here as well. Let's see, let's double check. 54, 71, 72, yeah, okay. Um, oh, but, I mean, that's good. Good to know. I don't think 2024 is that way. I'd be very interested to see if 2024 was that way. Oh, 7172. Look at this. Yeah, so basically what I could do is just go back, copy all this information down, get all the eagles, the birdies, the pars, the doubles, all that good stuff. Um... Which is, which obviously is good. Okay. Well, I need to do that at some point in time, but th at the same point or at the same level, this is a lot of work for me to do. I don't mind paying someone to do it for me. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And I, obviously I think this goes back. You go, you could go, well, 2013 is when my stats start. So if you were to go back all the way to 2013, let's see. I wonder if they actually have the stats. They do. That's awesome. So yeah, you just go back to uh, 2013 and start there. Basically, I would start there and ask ask for help, essentially. Anyways. Um, yeah, this was great. This would be, this would take a lot longer. Because, well, yeah, I wouldn't want it this way. I just want it tournament by tournament. And then that way I can just add it to each of the, the tournaments that I have for the results. Um, rounds, that's what I had. Yeah, do you think any, like, type one in chat, if you would be interested, like, would you complete a job for either money or a free membership? Actually, let me just make it simple. Would you complete a job if I said it would take you an hour to complete? 30 minutes to an hour to complete. Would you do a job for a free months, a three month or a free membership of one month membership free? Of course, you would have to see what the website would look like, but just just let's say it's uh, like Fantasy National or Rick Run Goods website. If it looked just like that, then you could get a free month. If you provide me 
an hour's worth of, of work, an hour's time of work. No, 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 stop at... It's crazy. Bodywood? That's cool. Alright. Uh yeah, I might actually add that to the website. I I mean, I'll I'll show you all the pages that I have. Um I'll show you what it looks like behind the scenes. So if I exit Go to my pages. So these are all the pages that I can create on the website. I have all of these. And I have a job board is what it's called. But you can see there's a golfer profile, course history, contact. I don't know if I'll actually have that, but maybe. Articles. We already have the about up there. Um, you can also, if you didn't know, you can use my logos. I always forget to mention that. It's when you log in, um, it will be uh, available to you that way. Yeah, round by round scoring, round by round strokes gain stats. That's actually really, I should, I need to create a round. Actually, I just would just create it in the strokes gain stats base or in the rounds table. Yeah, there's a, a lot of tables that I'm, I'm, or a lot of pages I'm, I'm going to build. But if you didn't know, you can come to, or if you log in, it should be a, Part of your account information, you just click the little uh, whatever and you can use the logos, whatever one you want, uh, copy it and attach it to your your website or, or not your website, but um, whatever you see fit. Josh is too busy. No worries, man. Uh, if I could 100% commit, I would do it. Well, here's the wonderful thing. Uh, I would make it like a checkout service, essentially. So if you were to check it out, I, you would have like one week to complete it. And if you couldn't complete it in one week, then you would, you would uh, push it back to other people being able to use it. So if it was one of those things you were interested in, and you could get to here and there, you most certainly could could, could do it, or uh, you know. But yeah, I I wouldn't mind, you know. I guess it wouldn't so much be helping out you guys, but you'd be helping me out, and in turn, I'll help you know give you free access. Anyways. Going back, uh, we want to also Gosh, there's so many things that I could add for round by this would be actually this might be my biggest table. It would be my biggest table. That's fine. I'll, that, that's okay. Um, yeah, no, I think I would want to add it no matter what. Yeah. 
going to add this. And we're going to call this strokes gained total round one. And we'll make that to round four. Strokes gain T, t uh, we don't want to do that. T to green round one. Oh, come on. Strokes gain off the tee, round one. Should almost just make this round one, like the opposite of what I have it. That might. Uh, never mind. Nope, this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> Throw chain approach, round one to round four. Strokes gained around the green. I like to make mine ATG versus ARG. Doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. Strokes gained putting. Um... Let's see here. There is another way to do this. Yeah, there's another way to do this. I could make four separate tables, one called, or uh, four other tables, one call, called round one. Round two, round three, round four, and then just one just called rounds. And instead of rating round one through two, three, four, or whatever. Cause you would want you'd want to see golfer like the golfer stacked on top of itself four times. You'd want to see like Wyndham Clark round one, Wyndham Clark round two, Wyndham Clark round three, and four, and then whatever their stats are. That's how you'd want to see it. You wouldn't want it this way. Okay. So yeah, okay. Well, I guess if I'm doing it this way, yeah, you know what? I I'll do it that way. I got no issue doing it. That, um. I'll keep this one really small and then I'll make four additional tables and they will all have the same thing and it'll be round one, two, three, four and it, it'll it actually, yeah, okay, okay, okay. It'll work the same way. I'm not going to do it this way. I'll keep it um, the way it is on the screen right now though. I guess let me just do control Z all the way across. I'll be better for the what or for the spreadsheet. Okay. 
Okay, I guess I can't go back any further than that. Just fine. All right. Glad we figured that one out. I think I just keep this one simple and keep it like this. <laughs> it would help out the sweet spot society. I agree. How are you guys doing right now? I know some of you said that uh, you're struggling or your lineups are struggling. Paul Morikawa got to six under. Wow. I built so many different lineups. Like they had so many different golfers in them. I'm actually okay with how the leaderboard looks right now. Like I, I've got no, like I kind of stayed away from Keegan. I, I <laughs> it's obviously a no cut event. So Keegan Bradley could come back, but I also didn't want to tilt and have Keegan Bradley on my team and then have to sit him watch or sit and watch him miss six foot putts left and right. I I just couldn't, I couldn't stomach myself. I couldn't do that. So like golfers that I faded, uh, or I didn't play a lot of, Keegan Bradley's one of them. I'm looking at the bottom of the leaderboard. So Keegan Bradley was one of them. Lee Hodges was another. Gary Woodland, Peter Melnati, Kevin Kisner, Grayson Murray. Those are all golfers that I'm happy to have faded. I also even faded Adam Svensson to some extent because I had no idea why everyone else was so high on Adam Svensson. Like a lot of the people in the fantasy industry, like some of your high up guys, they're all on, on Svensson. It's only round one, by the way, so he could heat up, but I don't understand where that came from. Uh, I had some exposure to Nick, Nick Dunlap. Uh, I guess let me throw this over here. I don't need to be looking over on the other screen. So yeah, we faded. I faded Keegan Bradley, uh, I, Lee Hodges. I couldn't. I don't. Knew, I couldn't even reason as to why to play Lee Hodges, who I did play. I played some Nick Dunlap. So that's that's disappointing to see him plus four. I I played some Jake Knapp. Jake Knapp was kind of my sneaky guy that I thought would do okay. I thought this was a course. I know his length benefits him, but I thought the course with like shot shaping abilities and stuff like that actually would play to his strength but I was wrong but was able to avoid Woodland, Milnati, Kisner Shank was a favorite play of mine so it's disappointing seeing him down here Xander at plus one that's uh, eye opening I faded enough Wyndham Clark to be happy with myself um, I just couldn't see him being a good course fit at this golf course despite his quote unquote talent Simpson, I, I pretty much faded. Nick Taylor was kind of someone I wanted to play more of. I did get to him in a, a few lineups, but nothing spectacular. Faded Max Homa to some extent. I had a lot of Fleetwood though, so that kind of sucks seeing him down there. Some Fitzpatrick. Harmon was up to minus four at one point in time. What happened? Ooh, a bogey double finish. Yeah, okay. Three over in the last two holes. Yeah, he added up to four under at one point in time. Uh, the optimizer loved Brian Harmon. I did not want to play that much Brian Harmon. It also loved Ricky Fowler. I did not want to play Ricky Fowler. This was just back and forth. But yeah, uh, the rest of these guys up here, I played con a considerable amount of. No, no Finau or Burns, really. I, I avoided Burns like the plague. We didn't play a lot of to uh, small hands Tom Kim, but he was on the 7k combo bucket, so I was obligated to play him. Matthew Pavon was a sneaky play. Alejandro Tro Tosti was also a sneaky play that I liked. I let the optimizer give me some Sung Jay. I, I don't, I wasn't comfortable with it, but I did let it give me some. I tried playing Phillips as much as I could. 
which isn't a lot, maybe 10%. Uh, Bezzy was uh, in the final few lineups I built, just because he was in the 7k combo buckets. Um, just kind of pointing out like some odd guys, like even Patrick Rogers. So like Patrick Rogers was actually paired up with, um, oh wait, yeah, no, no, no. He was what, 6,300? He was paired up with Seamus Power a couple times, who was 6,100 in my lineups. Same with Mac Hughes, Austin Heck wrote. Like all of these guys were actually paired up together, these 6K go golfers, if I started with Scotty. So that's one of those things that's like, I, last night, I just, I, th I thought to myself, it's Scotty again, isn't it? And then that was my, that was in my mind. I'm like, it's Scotty again. Has to be. Have to play Scotty. Have to. Uh, and it was a lot of what we went over in the live video. Uh, if you were there Tuesday night, we replaced the winner of the tournament with Scotty Scheffler uh, in 2023 and 2022 and tried to figure out with 13000 if that golfer was $13,300, could we build a lineup that would take down the GPP? And sure enough, 2023, you would have beat the GPP by like 20 points. And then you would have beat the GPP in 2022 with enough of those top guys with Scotty Scheffler at 13,300 if he wins the tournament, that is. Um, and you beat it by like eight points, maybe, but you still could get it done. You know, that's with a Scotty win. Scotty has to win. So that was my thought process. Like, yeah, I'm not going to bet against Scotty. Scotty, like, he played so miserable today. He shanked a shot out of the bunker and he still shot two under. Like, Guy's unreal. Um, let's see here. Cody Gamble goes, I went X over Aberg or Oberg, sorry. <laughs> As my final decision going really well. I know, dude. I know. 155 points is my best lineup. Uh, what's my best line? Oh. Only winning a measly 19. Just be transparent with you right now, 1949. And we put in, oh, put it by sport. $131. $131, 19 so far. My best lineup is 213. I like this one though. 5K, winner take all. Here's all my other winner take, like the strategy that I deployed is to get my money back, right? So we're close and getting our money back with some of these lineups. And I think some of them have Scotty in them, I think. Yeah, Scotty, Thigala, Shamo, Mac Hughes, like I said. I, I put those guys together, Power and Hughes, like I said. Uh, 194. What do we have here? Morikawa's leading that one. Yeah, this one here I'm kind of excited about. This one has Oberg in it. And, and the Zally Man, Thiala, Power, M, Connors. That's a really good lineup. So if Scotty doesn't win, I hope that one takes it down for a cool 5,000 bucks. That'd be sweet. We got a couple of those lineups up here. This one has Scheffler in it. So yeah, I got I, I got my boy Scheffler. And Poston. Poston in both of those? No. So we'll see how it shakes out. Uh, 211 different lineups, just so you guys know. Built 211. All with the optimizer. All right, so we decided... I can do this two ways, now that I think of it. So like for this event, let's just copy over some information. Let's copy like these headers right here. So like just to give you an example of what I'm thinking of. 
So let's call this tournament ID for Arby's Heritage is probably what, 17? I don't remember what it is, but this is the 2024 season and it's week 27? 26, 27, 27. Uh, 4, 18, 24, RBC Heritage. Which one was this? How did we write this one? Oh, BRBC Heritage 2023. Player, let's call it, it's going to be Sky Shuffler. Let's just do Sky Shuffler. And then just whatever, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. Um, so basically you would have round one and you would just copy this information down like that. And this would be round two, round three, round four. So this would, it'd be the, the exact same pieces of information, but then the rounds would be different and then you'd have all your stats here. So I could literally just, instead of going round one birdie, round two birdie, you could go birdies, or let's, let's actually go albatross, eagle, or eagles, birdies, pars, bogeys, uh, double bogey worse. Yeah, that's fine. And keep it like this, and then we could go strokes gain total. Strokes gain off the tee. Strokes gained approach. Strokes gained around the green. Strokes gained putting. So I could do these things. I could do it like this. which is fine. Because this is what you would want it to feed into um, your report builder. However, How would I do? I, man, this is difficult. This is kind of annoying, if I'm going to be honest with you. I think I have to do it this way. Let me double check something. I might have a folder, actually, and it might act, it might just help me out. see what I have so I scrape I scrape data golf okay yeah okay I can just copy and paste this over oh, it's so much work Even show me round one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it does. Yeah, round number right here. Oh boy. I think with this information, I only have it going back to 2017. That's so much. Stuff. Actually, no, 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 no. I think there's. I have something else. I have to. God, I hope I hope I have it all right here. Oh my god, I'm saved. 
awesome. I have it all saved. Good. Do we have their score in here? Of course, par. Round score. Lovely. Cool. All right. Glad to have thought that one through. see little interaction i'll give you guys uh an opportunity for roll call number two um just put a one in chat we'll make it real simple just a number one in chat and we'll give you roll call number two a number one in chat for roll call get yourself an extra entry into the giveaway I'm so happy that I have I have this that I actually copied it. So like I said, it goes back to 2017. You guys can't really see it, but this is from Data Golf. It even has their tee times that they had. Course number, I'll delete that. Course par is good. Course name is good, but I don't really need any of that information because I'll just tie it to the tournament name. this is like what I did with this I have an, an engine but I don't remember what is actually being calculated if anything maybe it's here nope it is here okay yep oh <laughs> there's all of my uh look at that all the formulas that go into it All formulas. There's the data, there's the formula. You see the cells that I have currently uh, highlighted? That's what it looks like behind the scenes. Wow. Solid. <laughs> I still have some updating because I only have my data going all the way to 2023. I do not have anything from the fall season forward. So tour championship of 2023, that's where my data goes up to. So I do need to update all that stuff moving forward.
All right. Well, I'll get. I'll. I'll come back to this when I get there. Now there's actually a decision that I need to make. Um. Oh, I'm getting an er an error. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Hope it's. I hope it's smooth on your guys' side. Uh, I don't need to look at this anymore. Nope, don't need to save that. Joanne, what's going on? Joanne, how are your lineups doing? Okay. So. The reason I like it in this format is I can do these rounds what their position was afterwards. I suppose I could probably do it the other way too. I need both of them. I need both of these these sheets the way that they are. Did you just build one lineup, Joanne? And it's sitting at 170 points? All right, so what I am trying to think of, these are all uh, single line pieces of data, which is good. This, this, this will limit the database having to really expend a lot of energy You know what? I still almost feel like I have to do all of the, the headers across. There's a part of me that doesn't like what it looked like on that data golf um, spreadsheet I was just showing you. Yeah, I, okay. I'm starting to think of it now differently. I, I need them both. I need a, I need this page. I also need that other page because on the other page, I can list them uh, horizontally. Or, or yeah, horizontally. Where you can see one golfer and then look at all their stats. But if I want to um, say I want to do everything by round one, I suppose you could filter them out and do it that way and figure it out. Oh, I think it's just, it would be smart to have. Something like this and something like I was just saying. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm went with Oberg and young that, I mean, Hey, that was a hell of a combo to, to go with and just three lineups. Do you do the uh, three max contest or do you kind of like just throw them into whatever contest that you feel like playing? Gosh, I don't know what to do. I think if I, if I had it this way, what I could do, I can create more formulas to create like unique stats that nobody else has. Whereas if I were to do it the other way, 
it'd be more challenging. But also, I, I could see the benefits of it being the other way. Maybe I just, yeah, I probably just keep them the same. Here, I'm gonna open up that last spreadsheet again. Sorry to bounce all over the place, but I want to see what this looks like. I gotta, I, I'm a visual person. I have to see something in order to actually understand it or learn it or whatever. Okay, so I want it to go by rounds like this. I'll scroll out. So I have tea time. I've got putting and I'm going to put a filter on this. Which actually might slow everything down. And if it does, I apologize. Let's go ahead and let's just look at Scotty Scheffler. I just want to see what it looks like and then what it would end up doing. Okay. So four rounds of Scotty. At the Tour Championship, finished 6th, rounds 1, 2, 3, 4, starting hole and tee time, that's, yeah, I definitely want this information like this. I get all the strokes gain stats, I don't get birdies, eagles, or pars, or anything like that, I get green and reg, driving distance, driving accuracy. I don't know if there's actually a benefit. This versus the other one. I literally could do everything that I have right here on that other spreadsheet. It's going to have way more records than what I have here. And records are the, the, each line is a new record. But this would have more columns. It'd have more fields. I don't know what's better. The other way is better. To show it uh, on a database like that, it's so much nicer to see it versus something like this. Again, I probably need both, if I'm being honest. I probably need both. And I would probably just keep it like this. Like, these, this is more like round results, and the other one's more round stats. Decisions, man. Decisions. Three max mostly. Okay. You know what? I guess what I can do and what I will do is test it out.
I'll open up a new uh, Excel spreadsheet. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy all this information from top to bottom. You're gonna see how this all works out. Uh, not that information. I want this information. It's a big spreadsheet. It takes a lot of time to think. Okay. Um, so we go from top to bottom. Copy it all over. Thank you, Joanne. Good luck to you as well. And hello to you as well. Save that. And I'm actually going to get rid of this. It's taking up a lot of bandwidth. Computer is really thinking hard. So let's open up our Power BI. Try to figure this out. So new import data from Excel. Uh, go here. Right here. Just gonna load it. I'm not gonna do anything fancy with it. I just wanna see what I can do with it. Okay. So get all of my fields over here. Let's go ahead and just create a matrix. Yes, this. Drag it down here. Make it like this big. Where's half? Half is probably right there. Uh, we want player name. Uh, we want round number. Actually, we want tournament name as well. So tournament. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I don't want a matrix. I want a table. I'm stupid. Do this down to here. Go to here. So player name yet again. Player name. Tournament. That's right. That's how I had it. Um, event name? Okay, way better. Event name's way better. Probably the date. Event number? I don't know if I want that. Uh, this is not to be a sum. Don't summarize. Year's good to have. I mean, let's not summarize that either. Move that up. I sort on this. Pretty sure I can. I have to go into my visuals to do that. Or if I had date, I don't know if I have a date. I know I have to have a date. I 
don't think I want that. What the hell? Well, whatever. I, I don't know how to... I guess it doesn't matter. I shouldn't really care too much about that. Uh, I do want finishing position, which is there. It's perfect. However, I okay. No, I do want this. I need to relearn how to do Power BI because I don't remember off the top of my head. summarize that either push that up here all right well i'm just gonna add all the rest of them now off the t approach around the green cutting t to green total i don't want any of these summarized i don't know why it just defaults to that i have to update that somehow stupid don't do that can we get rid of that Man, I need to figure out the sorting options.
smart filter. So I have smart filter on here. That's not the one I'm looking for. Oh, this is actually the... Okay. Interesting. How finicky. Dude, just let me move it. So weird. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder how it takes precedence. Like what determines what? I'll have to figure that out some other time. So you do that and then I have cards that I can put up here and the cards so, um, whatever they like scored, right? Let's see. Well, here, let's just do all of the strokes and stats. We can make this an average. You know, for, for every tournament that Scotty has played in, he averages 0.63 strokes gain approach. Well, we could click one of these, say, how about at the Genesis, in which it would switch to 1.19. What is this? What does finishing text do? Okay, we don't want that. Or round scoring? Oh, round score. There we go. Don't want to summarize that. So basically, what you can do is create another card, uh, and we can go round score there. And I don't want to sum it. Actually, I do want to sum. Do a count. Let's see here, show calculation.
Well, okay, never mind. Oh, okay. Yeah, so here's the difference of what I want to do. I get it now. I'd want average. And we'll rename this. Round one. Average. And so basically what you would do is probably create another um, slicer and put rounds in there. Round number. And just say, you just want round one. You see what his round one average is, strokes gained, like whatever his strokes gained approach is on, okay. Yeah, this is... Okay, this is if you drill down. Yeah, you'd want... Okay, okay, okay. So there'd be rounds, rounds detailed, and round summaries. Basically, the two tables I'd want to create. So I'm going to want to create two. And the reason being is, this is all drill down information. The only way you're getting to this, this number... So let's say it wasn't the genesis that you were looking for... Which one did I, oh, I did PJ Championship, right? Which one did I select? Oh, none of them are selected. Okay, so we are at the RBC Heritage, right? So he missed the cut, I'm guessing? No, he did not miss the cut. Okay. So we could look at, what, round two? So last year he shot a 65 and an average. So you'd have to go like, you know, round by round for just Scotty Scheffler. I guess if I were just to remove him. Average, Jesus. How does that work? Something's broken. I wonder if there's a text field in there somewhere. Let's do that and let's go to like the RBC Heritage. How would that be? Would it be that? Excuse me? Well, what's the sum of it then? Oh gosh, the average is like, it's it's pretty much zero. Why is it not showing just a zero? Wow. That's such a weird, I, I'd have to figure out what the calculation, why it's calculating like that. Oh, I, okay, so if you read this, I guess I have to format it. I would imagine I have to format this. Or right, go to three. Again, I'd have to figure it out with the calculation. I have no idea why it's calculating like that. Oh boy. 
I don't like that. I just would rather just say zero zero. Like I want it to be just two decimal places. I don't want it to be three. Value decimal places three. AJ comes back in to put one. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, you can. Oh, that's sweet. Well, anyways, I guess I'll just have to figure that out some other time. Um, but yeah, if you were looking at all of the round two stats, you would have to go through each of these golfers each of the years, unless, you know, I, I put in a year slicer. So you change the year, you change the number, you change all that stuff. Like that would be kind of annoying to some extent. Let's see, you'd probably have, you'd have to do it with the other one too. However, okay, so here's the difference. So I'm I'm kind of thinking in my head at the same time that there isn't a difference. So you see how it's like, here's your round score, the finishing position, strokes gain off the tee, strokes gain approach, around the green, yada, yada, yada. If I pull up my spreadsheet, and this is the rounds round, you know, this is what I plan to do. So, sorry. Um, if I were to put a filter on this, just to show you the same thing, just a different way, basically, and I put in the RBC Heritage, You're, we're going to get like something very similar to what you see over there. Um, you'll get the season, the golfer, finishing position, but instead of, um, you see how this is like, if I were to open this up to one to four, hell um you'll see all the golfers here mark anderson he's four times or he's put in here four times actually let me scroll to the bottom to 2023 uh no oh got a load all right here i'm going to make another slicer and we'll put year in year in this one Just go 2022 to 2023. It's fine. Scroll down to 2023 and I'm just going to use Scotty. Easy peasy. So we find Scotty Scheffler right here. One, there's, there's, you know, okay. So you see this round one, he shot a 68 finished 11th, and then these were his strokes gain stats for round one. You see how it's just perfectly horizontal, where it, whatever stat you want to find for round one, you can find it there. If we were to go like the other way that I'm thinking, you would have to go find Scotty Scheffler, who finished 11th at the 2023 RBC Heritage. So we find him right here. Here's Scotty Scheffler. So... You know, round one, just to show you what that looked like again. You have round one. He finished, he, he shot a 68. So you got that. If you want to look at round two, he's right there. He shot 65. Three, it's 69. Four, it's 70. 
So it's it's just you just go down the list because obviously you see it's round one, two, three, four. The other way would be round one, two, three, four. So this way, round one, two, three. So now you go horizontally when you're looking at the scores, which some people don't like that. And I don't know what I like more. For those that are in the chat following, listening or whatever, what is your preferred method? Would you like to see one line that has Scotty Scheffler and then see the stats that go along with it, alongside it. Here's here's the issue. Here's what will be difficult. So there's there's this way, which goes horizontally, and all your stats will go horizontal. But if I were to go to back to the report, this only has so much space. I can't. I can only put so many stats in there horizontally so you know round one can pack all of these stats that we want but like you see it's finishing position off the t stats approach stats around the green putting stroke scene total uh t to green and then total i could also have birdies eagles pars over here and whatever and then that's that it'll be contained everything will be contained and you'd have to go find Round one, round two, round three, round four for all those stats. And if you wanted to look up Scotty Scheffler, for instance, just Scotty. So we can go Scotty Scheffler. Find him at the RBC Heritage, which is marked right here. Um, and we could go all the years. So 20, I'm, I'm showing you how you could do this in the report. 2017. He, he only played it, you know, last year was his first year. And then whatever round you want to look at, you could look at round three this way. And figure it out that way. I don't know why this is showing up as blank and this showing up as blank. That makes no sense to me. Um, but then you would find your stats however you want them. I wonder if it's because there's no... Oh, round one average. I'm not. I'm not looking at round three. And this is average strokes gained approach for round for a specific round. Shouldn't be. I guess if I do two, do I get an average? Interesting. Oh, I guess maybe there isn't an average. Is that why? If I make this a sum. No, nope, doesn't like that. I don't get it. Oh, Sky Scheffler's name disappear? Weird. Ah, oh, I broke something. Not sure exactly what. What is going on? I clicked something. I have no idea what I did. That didn't change. Guess it just needed to be refreshed. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what happened. It needed something. Okay. It's fixed. It's back to being fixed. But yeah, I guess what I was getting at is you have 
the ability to put this down on four rows. So here's here's a better way to put it. You got round one, round two, round three, round four. To have it this way, where it's round one and the stats that go with round one go across, in order to keep it all on one line, you'd have to multiply that over. You'd have to continuously... So like round two stats would come over here. They'd be over here. And then round three stats would be over here, you know. So then you'd really have to look sideways to go find round three stats, round two stats, round one. I think this is probably the best way to, to view it this way. And I think I would want to create it both ways. If I'm being honest. That's, I, I think th now that I talk it out, I'm going to have to do it both ways. I'd want to do it both ways. One, just to see what the round by round scoring was for a tournament is nice to see right here. I suppose I have my results right here. Maybe, okay. Maybe that's what I have to do. We just put the results here. So, you know, you have your scores. And then I can also put like after round one. I, I, I don't think I need these right here. I don't think I do. And I, I don't think I need this. It's actually good to have something like that because you can also make custom stats with that, with those stats. I got decisions to make. <laughs> and it's difficult to make them while uh, like on stream trying to do this, like figuring it out. It's definitely something I got to really think through, though. I don't think I need these stats. Not that it matters, like, I can just add that, I can add this whenever. I don't, I don't think I need that, I don't think I need total rounds. Maybe I do need those things though. I do. AJ, I see you said sized ways. I bet it's just best to put everything in that you think you need and then just remove it when you don't need it. That's probably the best way to go about it. It's best to have it and not need it versus need it and not have it. Like needing it and not having it just gets annoying because then you have to redo the work that you already did. So I think I just, I keep this the way it is. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I got some updating to do, so. I think that's probably where I'm gonna call it. See five of you in the chat. Um, I think I'm just gonna work on this as opposed to staying silent. 
it's difficult to like think about talking about it all the way through. Um, I would say this, if you're not on sweetspotdfs.com, if you haven't signed up, go do so. Super simple, just create a free account. You don't have to spend anything, it can be free. Go sign up. If you're not a founding member and you'd like to be, like I said, I only have, I'm limiting it to 25 users. So up to you guys. You don't have to, you don't have to. Uh, you can skip these for now since I don't have the database behind it. How will this be a better description than the DraftKings round average? What do you mean? How will this be a better description than the DraftKings round average? I'll stay on and answer that question. I, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. I guess my question is, what are you trying to achieve with entering each round data? Is it to see round average? Yeah, it's just to have all the round stats that you would like. So if you're playing showdowns, uh, showdown contests on DraftKings and you want to see a specific golfer, like what is his average? I mean, the, the, here's one thing that I've always tried to attack this, this website thing is how I interpret data how I try to research data versus what other people use. Like, there are some really simple websites out there. Um, like, you know, Degenerate75. He, his Rosetta Stone, his stone, is just, it's just a spreadsheet that has data. It's a cheat sheet that has all the information that he finds interesting, that he, he cares about, and people use that and I don't even know if they know what they're looking at I think that to some extent they do but they're like that's the one thing like I don't understand is are people just looking at it and trusting the person who's providing you that information is just giving you honest information you know like databases will throw information out there to you and it's on you to research it. And that's essentially what I want to provide is you to have the opportunity to research it. And then I'll also show you how to use it. Like to, I'll show you the things that I want to research. And then that way you can go and research it yourself versus, you know, I provide a cheat sheet too. If you were to check out my cheat sheet, where do you, like, you don't, you don't see where I get my information from. So it's, it the website's supposed to be more of a research tool than anything like you just doing research so i want to provide all the stats that i possibly can and the biggest challenge is trying to figure out a way that makes it visually appealing and easy to understand for people to use that's the diff that's the difficult piece so is the round averages on DraftKings correct, or do you believe there need 
they're not correct. They're not accurate. So you're talking about if I were to go here, go to showdown. Are you talking about this stuff right here? Like the round two average? Are you talking about that stuff? Like Scotty Scheffler having a 67.6? Is that what you're referring to? Um, I don't know how far that goes back. You, you, you literally can't tell me what round two average means just by looking at this other than it's, it's just saying round two average. Like how far does this go back? Does it just only go back till 104, 2024? And we're just looking right here, 64, 66, 64, 66. So that's a average of 65. 70, 67, 69, 70, 72. I suppose that's probably what goes into that average. But like if I were to um, pull this back up, let's just not do RBC Heritage at all. And let's change this to round two. Or how did what stat went into this? The round score. That's not round one average. That's just round average. Okay. So yeah, two and two. So there's Scotty Scheffler's round two average, 68.61. And I trust that because it's a calculation. And if I truly wanted to, I'd look at all the round scores for all the round, all these numbers and figure it out, you know, copy and paste, figure it out. But I kind of already know that it, 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 it does that for me. Well, that goes to 2022. My bad. If I open this up, 69.12 is his actual round two average, but then 68.61 this last year and of just 2023, 68.11 is an average. So yeah, it's not what you see on DraftKings isn't giving you like the full breakdown of what his actual average is. You know, and this is just giving you an average. What if I want to, um, uh, let's see what's round score again. What if I were to do the minimum? You know, like this is also important information. 59 is his lowest round two score ever. So where, where is that? Right here. The Northern Trust, he shot 59. Well, AJ, it's not that they they aren't completely accurate. It's that you're only getting you're only getting a condensed uh, piece of information. So I I think they're accurate. It's just Scheffler's data for his his round two average. What this shows right here, sixty seven point six six, goes only back to the beginning of the year, one oh four the century so it starts here like the average that DraftKings is putting on their site is for the data that they are showing you exists so I think 104 and on and I I'd have to I'd have to validate that but whatever you're getting here is whatever DraftKings wants to show you I don't think this information is wrong but they're only showing you what they, they want you to see Whereas if you had a database research um, site that you could go and research the information your, on your own, 
you could literally, you know, let's pretend this is um, Valero Texas Open because I know that, or is the Houston Open the one that he has more? I can't remember. Let's just do Houston Open. Oh, it's a whole bunch of different names. Never mind. I don't. How about the Arnold Palmer? I think these are, oh, my name disappeared. Yeah, I guess I can't do Scotty Scheffler. I don't know, this search thing is weird sometimes. I have no idea why it's acting this way. I don't know how this actually works. Just find him. God. I don't know why it, it's changing. the hell was going on right there oh I must be selected on some oh, okay I get it all right There's a golfer that I'm selected on right now. All, all, all. Ay, ay, ay. Holy moly. Oh, okay. We got, we got it. It's back to being normal. Cool. I don't think I like this filter much. It is very uh, clunky. Very clunky. Okay. So we'll do this. Scotty. And I'll do the Arnold Palmer. Because he's got a few events there at the Arnold Palmer. Um... I get what you're saying, but I like to the information going back to 50. Yeah, okay. So that's also another thing that you could put on here and that actually, um, yeah, now that, you, now that you say that, that makes sense for me to keep um, these stats right here involved. Because this would be a count.
Actually, I would have to do it a different way. I'd figure out a different way to do it. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what you could do. Um, I don't care to go back different rounds, but I know people do. That's the other, th that, that's a perfect uh, example of what I was just talking about. Um, if you like to go back 50, 100, 24, 32, 16, 8, whatever many rounds you want to go back, I don't personally do that. Uh, I get why people do that though. I like to go back dates. Because to me, a date matters more than how many rounds. Um, but I get it from a statistical standpoint that you want to go back rounds because it's a measurement. Um, but that's another that's another thing like when it comes to this this database stuff is is putting together something that people want to see. So yeah, I, I mean like I wouldn't be too um The, the whole purpose for me, I, I guess going back to your question, the whole purpose for me is to give you the tools that you you want to see, that you would like to have. Um, and, and quite frankly, like uh, most of this is me building a website for myself and then also providing all of you to be able to use it as well. Because some people like my girlfriend say, look, he average, averages 67 around, but what if they only played four events this year? It's misleading to, at, to the average player, DraftKings average. Yeah, I know. Exactly right. Um, I, I never really, like, I'll say this. If you're doing showdown and you, and you, want, to, you want to sort by average, why not? it's just a number like six if you think about it 67.6 if i bring up this for me this is scotty scheffler's locked in uh this is for the arnold palmer but if i take the arnold palmer away 69.11 is his average dating from 2020 to 2023 that's round one uh just round one average but if i just wanted or that's that's all rounds but if i go round two to two which is just, we're looking for round two, it's 69.04. So if I go back to DraftKings, 67.6, it's a one stroke difference. You know, it doesn't show you how many birdies, because DraftKings goes by birdies, doesn't tell you how many eagles, doesn't tell you how many pars, just gives you his round two average. Compared to my round two average, which goes back to 2020 like don't mind it saying round one i just i named it that um but this is all 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 round two all the averages for round two 69.04 this includes really tough golf courses like the u.s open this it, you know it counts a lot of different things uh rbc heritage isn't a difficult golf course so you know 69.04 doesn't really matter and this also includes years where he wasn't that good you know like 2020 if i just move this to 2020 his average goes up to 69.27 it was 2020 to 2021 it actually even goes up further 69.41 69.3 and now we're at 69.04 and then if i scroll in boom we're at 68.61 now I'm a full stroke behind DraftKings, but you know, Scotty Scheffler's much better in 2024 than he was in 2023. I mean, argue you could argue that, but like the end of 2023 wasn't super good for him. So when you look at this number, you could play it. Like, but you like I said, you don't know what goes behind that number. And that's like the, the same thing applies with my cheat sheet, right? I do my best to tell you guys what goes behind the cheat sheet. Like, I give you all the information, but, like, like, you don't know what this SS rank 1 means. If I was to say he's the, the highest ranked golfer, you don't even know how to double check that. And when I go and I do course history, you don't know where to check that. You'd have to listen to my podcast to tell you what that is, which I which I do. I tell you that all my data goes back to 2013. 
And then recent form, you might not even know what that means. Is a recent form average. You have no idea what that means. You have no idea what that calculates back to. But I, I still provide it for a cheat sheet. And you can use all this information however you like. Most of it might be nonsense to you. Most of it might be good for you. Or some of it might be good for you. Um, you probably don't even know what the colors mean completely. Red's obviously not good. But, um, yeah. And you, like, how, how do you even, how can you even validate that my, the shot shapes I have, unless you watch golf or even the home state or the home region, you know, this is all my curated data that I have curated, that I have looked up myself. You just have to trust me on it, but you don't have to trust me if I put it into a database. I mean, I guess what you could do is cross check it, cross reference it to another database. So if you're like, hold on, I don't know if, if Eric is really giving me the, the right round two numbers for the Arnold Palmer Invitational. You could literally go to any website and double check what they have for off the tee approach around the green putting and then compare it to my stats and see if it's if it's the same or not. But there's really, I guess there's no real way to tell like if you're getting PGA stats from the PGA tour, you can count on that being a hundred percent correct. Um, anywhere else that you're getting PGA tour data, if it's an affiliate of the PGA, maybe that's how you can also tell, but outside of that, you wouldn't be able to tell. But, you know, to me, it's like if you can cross reference a couple things like finishing positions, uh, that's why I kind of I'm I'm more heavily. I, I weigh the importance of finishing position more than any other stat, because it is the only true stat you can't really get. Um, you really can't manipulate. I mean, you can't manipulate uh, a finishing stat or a finishing place. You can manipulate these off the tee stats. Like what if the PGA Tour has for the Arnold Palmer Invitational round two for Scotty Scheffler, what if it has 0.88 strokes gain approach? Does that make my data wrong or does that make their data wrong? But then at the same time, 0.06 for strokes gain approach you don't even know what the difference of that is. And it really doesn't matter. Like here, I, I, I'll show you this like for uh, for an example. I have a strokes game calculator that I like to go to every once in a while. If I go to the calculator and I put in here. Actually, this is perfect. So um, let's make it something easier. 10. So 0.26. Let's see, what do I have for my chart? Okay, let's see, just 12. So 0 0.26, that's, that's, that's uh, seven. 0 0.07. So basically, uh, if you hit it 15 feet away from the pin, if I'm using this as an example right here, this 0.94 that I have, 0.94. If my stat says 0.94 and someone else's has 0.88, that is the difference of a 15 foot shot, like 15 feet from the pin on an approach shot versus 12 feet. It really doesn't make that big of a difference. Like honestly, you can, you could, we could argue that. I guess if we went from 30, What's my next number? I have 25. It's not nearly enough. I do have a 20. How about a 20? So 30 foot putt versus a 20 foot putt. That's a le that's 0.11. It's just a little bit more, but a 30 foot putt versus a 20 foot putt. I mean, they're percentage points. That's what the stroke chain stats are. So you basically have a 13% chance to make a 20 foot putt and you have a 2% chance to make a 30 foot putt. The chance is, I mean, it's still, it's better. It's a, 
it's a higher chance to make your 20 foot putt and I think that just goes without saying but it's still not up for certain so can you link sources to show where you are getting your info from I trust you but don't know about others yeah so um I am getting my data through a friend who has an account on data golf so all of my data comes from data golf I don't have an account with them yet so I usually shudder to to admit that because I think there's probably some kind of copyright thing that could come with this or I'm not positive but yeah, I pull my data from Data Golf through a buddy's uh, account. Someone that I helped win money. Um, but yeah, I don't know like where other people are getting their data from. But here, here's the thing: the bucket system is based off of results, finishing positions. So if I were to go to, uh, I had the Zurich Classic up because I was, I was updating this and I was looking at it, but like, the bucket system is all about finishing positions. So like, Nick Hardy and, and uh, Davis Riley won that tournament last year. You yourself can just go to 2023 Zurich Classic leaderboard and find that Nick Hardy and Davis Riley won that tournament and then Nick Taylor Adam Hadwin were second Hosler and Clark were third and if I were to go back to my cheat uh this is a classic thing there's Hadwin and Taylor and Clark and Hosler so like that data and it's and it by its own I think that's I think a lot of this data is really simple to to go look up. So if I I look at my 2023 DK page and we see what the round 1 through round 4 scoring was, you can go validate this very simply. And then you just go back and you just look at that stuff. Most of my database stuff is going to be revolved around these very static numbers that you can't you can't get wrong. Right? You can't you can't, I can't flub this. I can't say, you know what? Nick Hardy shot a 58 and then he shot a 70 and then he shot a 42 and then he shot an 80. And then it, and then it rounds out to be the same thing. As soon as you see that I have an 80 for round four when it's supposed to be a 65, that's when I become less credible. But I'll say this, you go to data golf right now, their strokes gain stats are gonna be different than what the PJ tour has. And if you go to Rick Run Good, I think his stats are going to be the same as PGA. I think. I can't remember. But like some people will have their own stroke gain stats. And you can measure stroke gain stats by shot link data. So you can c calculate shot, uh, stroke gain stats by the, uh, the shot link data if you have it. So some people are calculating their own stroke gain data. They're not that wrong. Like it's not that big of a deal to be off by anywhere between 0.05 to 0.1 strokes gain. Like it's it's honestly. And oh by the way, um oh, Byron was showing me this. I think Byron has an account on Data Golf. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see it. Uh let's see if I can. I think if I go to tournament stats and go to historical stats can I look at a different tournament how do I get to a different tournament From 2023. I don't want 2023. Forget how you change. I 
I also don't care for data golf's like website that like it's interact uh, interactions. Okay, so I get a drop down here, which is wonderful. Okay, cool. I want that for stroke chain stats. This is maddening. How do I... Give me a different tournament. Oh, it's, it's blocked out for me. I can't do it. Um, shoot. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to show you was if you chip in, like on data golf, if you chip in and your stroke skiing gets adjusted, you'll have negative putting stats. I don't know if any of you guys noticed that or if you've ever seen it, but your putting stats can get affected by or can get affected by chipping in depending on if the course is really easy or really difficult, you would get them like, oh, we saw this with, I think Hayden Springer uh, during the career builder, or not career builder, uh, the American Express tournament. I'm pretty sure it was then, it could have been another tournament around there, Sony maybe. Uh, we were going over it or Byron was doing it in his chat. And I said, wait a minute, go back to that golfer right there. He's like, what? I'm like, you see, he chipped in, but he got negative stroke gain putting because when you adjust the stroke chain stats at the end of the tournament, every stat gets adjusted, every stat. Even if you didn't even have that stat, which only in that situation could you do. Same goes with around the green, I suppose. Even if you didn't have a chip around the green, when it gets adjusted, like every, you could walk away from the tournament with negative around the green stats. If you, even if you didn't even chip. Like some, like data golf does it that way when it adjusts stats, because there's no easy way to just adjust one stat versus another. You adjust all four uh, off the tee approach around the green and putting all four at the same time. And when you do all four, you just, you basically add a negative or a plus to that stat category. It doesn't really matter for what each hole, but it, it affect it. Um, it does affect I'm not, I'm not sure what the word I'm looking for I guess effectively it does affect every single stat but anyways uh, Josh going back to your your question uh, the I, I pull like their finishing positions off of ESPN.com same goes with their round by round scoring I don't think that that's wrong. I pulled dra all the DK points off from DraftKings. Uh, the ownership comes from DraftKings. The tee times come from PGA Tour. Like, again, a lot of this stuff, you know, I don't know. I'm not even sure if you're supposed to even copy it or not. I have no idea what the copyright rules are or anything like that. But that's how it goes. So yeah, fun stuff. I think it probably, I think it's probably best to do it horizontally. Or, or both, I suppose. That was the question. Seeing it like this, seeing round two, three, four with their scores and then all of their stats. You definitely want to see it like that. So that's definitely going into the database that way. You're welcome, AJ. And, and thanks. Thanks and you're welcome.
Yeah, that's also another reason I don't really care for stroke chance stats. It just... It, very little differences matter to a lot of people, and they shouldn't. Little differences in stroke chance stats don't mean anything. Most people don't even know how they're calculated. Most people don't even know how they're adjusted. I think I'm going to do it this way. I don't think there's a reason to do it the other way. I'm just going to add the uh, the stats. Yeah. I'll have to figure out a way how to update that completely. But this is the only, I think this is the only way to do it. Anything I want to accomplish the other way, I can do right here. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay, I'm gonna call it quits though. I, I'm. Thank you for the questions, AJ. I was, I was happy to answer them, and I hope it provides enough people out there uh, enough information and data that's that's helpful and useful. But I gotta call it quits. I'm getting tired. Uh, I'll, I'll give our. I will answer some more questions if you have them though. I got no issue with that. <clears throat> I'll uh, I'll give like 30 seconds when my uh, actually yeah when my timer gets to two minutes and or not two minutes Jesus 40 seconds from this point forward I'll give you guys it'll be two hours 29 minutes on my um live feed Josh, all right, man. Josh, I know you're you, you've signed up on SweetSpotDFS.com. Thank you. I will get this uh, up in in gear. We'll we'll uh, we'll figure it all out. Absolutely, Josh. Good night to you too, man. Okay, it's past 40 seconds, but I am going to call it quits. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. All right, bye.